All right, guys, so let's go through some stocks for Sunday, what I'm looking at. So first we have Apple. Apple is a stock that has earnings coming up this week, so we need to be very careful. I am not gonna be trading Apple until after earnings, but these are the levels that I wanna see. When I look at Apple, I see that Apple has a nice downtrend right now coming all the way down here. Apple has done nothing but just sell off over the last year to date right now. So for the last four months, you can see here, all it's done is be in this downtrend. And to me, this is important because this shows you that if Apple does get a pop, resistance is clearly right here, right here at 180. But basically at this level, 182, we just see resistance. I wanna see is Apple finally going to break and make new lows. This is what I'm looking for with earnings. They've been pretty flat right now and their earnings expectations are very, very low right now. So if we do get a sell off, I can finally start buying long term, which is what I'm looking for. Apple's a hard company to day trade because it doesn't move fast. It only moves fast during earnings. And besides that, it's really slow during the day. So for me, I don't really day trade Apple too much because it doesn't move fast enough for somebody like the way I trade. So anyways, this is what we're looking at. This is our level right in this, this area. You can see right here, there is consolidation. Right here, there is consolidation. And then also right in here, you have consolidation, this level right here. Right there and right there. So what I'm doing is, if Apple starts to sell off, I wanna see a pullback after earnings from about 165 all the way down to about 140. It's a 15% drawdown. That's where I'm looking to make my entry. I'm not gonna trade Apple while it's while it's in this downwards trending pattern. Remember, when you go long on patterns that are trending down, your odds of losing money if you're not shorting are very high because you need a real catalyst like earnings that is going to break free from the trend. So the trend is down right now, so you have to be very careful. And if you're gonna pick bottoms, you better pick bottoms that have actual support levels. Otherwise, you're gonna be in trouble. All right, next, I wanna talk about Google. Google crushed their earnings. They did amazing. And they were hovering in this 150 area, jumped up to 180s, they're offering a dividend. If you are looking to get into the Google train and you figure you missed it, you know, you weren't in, I think what you should really try to think about is waiting for the retest and then getting back in. So if Google can get to this 160 range, then I could understand why you'd want to try to take a long position. But to buy this candle that just happened from 155 all the way up to 180, just look at that percentage move that Google made. That is a, where'd it go? There, that is a 17% move up. That's gigantic. If you go year to date on Google, it has moved all the way from 130 all the way up to 180. And when you zoom out, look how red this candle is. So there's a lot of selling pressure right now in the 180s. But you have to remember, when you look at Google over the long term, this is all-time highs it's ever been. So because they're making moves, they're offering a dividend, they're doing very well on the, on the financial sheet, and you want to get in long term, I wouldn't just buy at the new high just because you saw that. I'd be trying to wait for that pullback to 160 and then make your, your buys and follow your stop loss below 150. So 150 is your stop loss, 160 is your entry. And as you can see, we're waiting for about a 6.14% pullback and then make an entry. That's what I'm looking at for Google. So not buying up here, buying the 160 range. Microsoft. What's very interesting about Microsoft is I was, look, I was looking at this company yesterday and I just went over, this is the max chart on it. And if you look at the max chart, it really didn't explode the way it did until after about 2020. Because if you zoom in here, you can see that the highest over here in 1998 was around $135. Then it went flat from 2005, 2007, all the way up to 2018 where it went back up to $100 a share. And this is a company that is extremely bullish. And then COVID hit and it went all the way up to $350 a share and now it's making new highs. So you have this bullish channel right now that you're trading in when you trade Microsoft. So you have to be very careful. Obviously this is 
probably the single most best company there is to invest in, but they are so expensive that it's hard to get entries on them. So when I buy companies like this, I try to buy them in the middle of the channel. So I try to wait until they're kind of like in the middle of the channel and then I make my entry. So let's zoom in a little bit now and let's see what we can find here. So we'll go to the six month chart and here is, I'm sorry, let's do the one year chart just to make it more simple. Here's our three channel trends that we just did. And it is trading in this range right here where you are trading from 386 up to about 430. And just recently, it was selling off and it was in the 390 range. It was selling off to here before earnings, went all the way down to 390, and somebody was buying near the bottom of this channel. If you see, it was 387 to about 380. So people were buying, and when you have these thin wicks right here, this is extremely bullish because the sellers were not able to push this part down. So as you can see, we might make this move back up and regain the middle of the channel, which would be huge for Microsoft. So now we'll see because it's having resistance right here at this 420 range. So I'd be very careful trading Microsoft at that 420 range. You have to make sure that it can get past here because if it doesn't, it's just going to continue to sell off. Once it can reestablish that support, let's get rid of this, reestablish that support at around 420 because you can see it right here, this area. It's got to get above it, hold it, and then blast to 430 and make new highs. That's what you're looking at with Microsoft. Your next uh, stock that we're going to review, we're just going to review um, Carnival real quick. Carnival stock has clear, clear resistance right here at $19. Support-wise, I don't really see support on this, to be honest. When I go over the five-year, I see a company that used to be $72 and now it is worth 15 so that's a 80% drawback. I only really feel comfortable holding Carnival stock. I have shares around $9. I really only feel comfortable holding it if it's below $10. But if you were going to day trade this stock, I would argue that there is potential support right in this range around 11, 10 to $11. And that's where I'm holding as it is currently. So it has to get above this $20 range. Otherwise, we're going to be trading in this zone. So you have a zone. Let me just show you. You have a zone right here where it is just trading right here. This is it. This is, this is Carnival. So if you're going to be looking to make trades, I'd be trying to trade the bottom here from 11 to $12 for bounces back up to the mid-range $15. If you're really that risk adverse, go for 19, but I'd follow your stop loss below $11. That's what I'm looking at with Carnival. It's gotta break out of that trend for you to have any momentum. Next stock, Home Depot. I like Home Depot. I think that this could be a potential buy for the long-term portfolio. Home Depot, I feel like is a, is a, is a company that I'm there every weekend buying something. But not just because I know the stock, but because when you look at them on the max chart, I mean, this is very bullish. You can admit that this part doesn't look good. You have double topping tails here. It's topping tail, topping tail. So there could be potential sell-off. But any company that's this big is going to get bought up. But let's look at the trend channel. Let's draw this like that. Boom, draws the trend channel. Just to show you how I did that, this is Weeble. You click up here, click trend channel. Pretty cool how it shows you that. So... Like I said, we're going to try to buy in the middle, the middle of this trend. So what I'm going to do is in a few days, if, if uh, Home Depot is still around 325, I'm going to buy some shares long term. Where I really want to buy shares is like around the 300 level, just because the psychological 300 level. But just look at it in the last month. It has sold off. So it's not like we're, we're buying a crap company. This company makes a ton of money. And it really gives you a good idea how the economy is doing. And it's down 15, 16%. So it's a nice discount right there alone that I'm looking at. But if you're looking at levels of support, you can see that it started to gauge or some support around this 330 range right here and right here. So that was kind of nice. Next, let's move to Starbucks. This is another company I own long term. Um, 
overall, like we said, quick review. I made a video on this earlier. We're going to look at $80 as support. If you're day trading this, $80 is your support. You could look to short this thing at any time. It's at $90. If it can't stay above it, trying to short it back down. McDonald's. McDonald's is a company that is bullish. Look at this bullish trend that it has. Anytime it's hitting this ascending uh, line right here, which I drew, this will be support. So basically, anything McDonald's wise, that's 260 and above. If it 260 is your stop loss, if it doesn't break that, definitely you know trying to make some moves on that. Nvidia. Nvidia is a company that will not die. They they every time they get knocked down, even if it's 100 points, they come back. Nvidia is just a monster. You could just buy it at any time and you're making money. 845 down to 776, down 8%. What does it decide to do? It just decides to shoot back up. This this company is unbelievable. It shoots back up to 12% to 880. Um, when it comes to support levels, it is pretty clear that Nvidia has a strong support level around this area, around 780 to 750. They're buying it up. You can see it right here. This is the break and the retest. It blasts up. It retests right here, retests right here, and breaks. So if you are in NVIDIA, I could see, I could understand taking your stop loss below one, below 750. Because then if it does break that level, you're going to have some massive selling off and you're going to see 650 from there. But it looks like it's going to make new highs, to be honest. So we'll see where it goes from here. Just keep it by it. If you buy it at 850, I would be careful. 750 or below, you definitely need to follow a stop loss. Meta, looking at Meta, focusing on the one year chart. This company is just incredible. They make so much money and their earnings looked beautiful. So, look, we're trading the top of the channel. This is your channel. You can see the, the channel bullish going all the way up. What I would do if I'm trading this company is I would buy at the bottom of this channel. Because look, it's been holding the whole time. You were at the bottom after earnings when it went to 400 and it blasted back up to 443. So we just need to focus on the fact that our support level is this 400 level. And if 400 breaks, all that means is that this, this trend, this trend that you see right here is broken. And it's going to start to sell off here. After that, it's kind of a free fall. I don't think Meta's going anywhere. I think long term, you compare the PE ratio, you compare their growth that they have. I think Meta's a great buy no matter what. But you got to think of long term with them. But there's definitely a potential move from 400 back up to 500 here. Because the only the only resistance I see is in this area at 485. So we'll see where it does. It recovered pretty well when it went all the way down from 510 all the way down to 400, which was insane. Because if you think about it, they crushed earnings, guidance was a little low, and it's down 22%. That doesn't make sense for a big cap company. But the only reason it does make sense is because you can see that in the one year, they went from 230 all the way up to 530, which is 135% gain. So that makes sense. Focusing on the QQQ, you always got to look at the QQQ when you're trading, especially if you're a day trader, you need to know what these markets are doing. It's clear that we are having resistance at all-time highs. 450 is all-time highs, but you had a nice bounce back up from 413 back to 446. Coming back on the six-month chart, we are trading in this channel. So you have, you have support here, resistance at 450, support at 410, and it is just trading in this channel right now. So we have to wait and see where does it want to go. So QQQ is waiting, sitting at 430. Let's see if it makes a move back up to 450. You definitely will have some resistance in this 440 range. It's going to get thickly traded there. But until it uh, breaks 410, it is very bullish. Intel is another stock I was looking at. I called this level out $30 to be a buy. You just got to be very careful because when you look at Intel, this, this chart looks awful. It's like very choppy. It blasted up to $450, went to $10, went up to $63, went down to $25. And now since earnings, you have this big red candle and you have this retest of this level at $30. Long term, I could see a position, but it's got to be low 20s. It's got to be like $22, $20 to $23, $4. This company is a semiconductor company. And when you compare it to the growth of other semiconductor ETFs or NVIDIA AMD, it's just it's not it's not having any growth. So it, it has 
they do make money, but it seems like when you look at their balance sheet, they like to pay their, their, uh, you know, the CEO's bonuses and stuff, but they're only making 10% growth this quarter. So you definitely have to be very careful with these guys. Um, $29. I honestly would feel more comfortable buying in the $25 range down here. Let me just zoom this down for a second. I'd rather buy, be a buyer right here. This is what I'm waiting for now. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna try to swing trade these guys, twenty five dollars, back up to forty, I'm looking to buy at twenty five dollars. I want to see if this level right here can can hold. So at twenty five dollars down to twenty three sixty four, that's where I'm looking to make my entry on Intel. So what I do is I just set alerts. Just set an alert, and you know I have an alert set for Intel, and uh, when it gets there, I'll make that decision. Tesla. You know, you look at Tesla's earnings, they didn't do the best. It was really just a, they're, you know, they lost cash flow. They st they are still like the dominant EV company, obviously. But it's a lot of fluff being spoken about. And I love Tesla, but they're not, you know, they have to show that they're actually going to be profitable. You know, if the earnings aren't showing profit, then I know right now they're in the growing phase. they got the inflation. But you got to be very careful with these guys. These guys can continue to sell off. And it seems like any article just makes them sell off. So we'll see. I have them long term. I hold shares of them, but I'm still very cautious with it. You got that bottom at 138.80. I mean, look at the five year chart. I just want you to see this is a mess. If you own them from 2021 in the 400s, all you've done is lost money unless you've averaged down heavily to maybe sell out and then re get a position. But this level's been holding up around the 140 range. And until Tesla can get out of this channel, this channel has to get broken. It's got to get out. It's got to get above 225. So it's got to go up 30% from here. It's got to get out of this channel and then blast up. The only way that's happening is if FSD gets approved. The model, you know, $25,000 EV car that he's saying is really showing momentum. That's you got to look at. The last thing I wanted to show you was SPSM. SPSM is finally starting to show a little bit of weakness. I, it's trading in this channel though, from forty three dollars to thirty four. This is a small cap uh, ETF. I just want to see it sell off a little bit more, and I'm going to start adding to this position. I want to see it come down to thirty five dollars. This is what I'm looking for. So alerts are set. It's trading at the top of this this uh, resistance channel, and I need to see it come down more. So this is where SPM has been: thirty five dollars to forty, thirty five dollars to forty. We'll see which one it's going to go to. If inflation, if interest rates keep rising like they are right now, I can't imagine that small cap stocks are going to go up considering they need capital to grow their businesses. And without that, they're screwed. So that's just a quick recap what I'm looking at. I really want to see Apple after earnings. That's one of my big focuses. And Amazon as well. Amazon is a company that... When you look at Amazon, it is to the moon at 189. I can't. I, I just. I can't buy Amazon at this level, and it might just keep going to the moon. But 81. This is all within a year. 81 dollars all the way up to 190. I just. If you're not gonna buy at 90 dollars, why are you gonna buy at 190? I need to see a sell off. I need to see like 140s. And if if they like look at Meta. Meta sold off 21 percent in the after time and after hours and then recovered. That is possible. I mean, 20% move here is to about 150. So 190 to 150, that would be a nice move. And then maybe start thinking about picking up some shares. But I can't buy at these top levels. It's just, it's at all-time highs right now. So that's what we're looking at right there. 